And the Bible says a cloud received him out of their sight. Write this scripture reference down. Matthew chapter 17 verse 5 gives us the account of the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain. On Mount Sinai. And he went up on that mountain. And he took those few disciples with him. And it says, and there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah. And Jesus was transfigured before them. And it says a cloud engulfed them. And they heard instantly a voice from the midst of this crowd saying, I, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. This is my son. I believe it was that same cloud that came down. When Jesus said to these disciples, I'm going back to my father, the same cloud that received him into the presence of the glory of his father in heaven. Here was God's affirmation of his son's work. He was taken up into the glory, into the glory. In John's gospel, chapter 17, Jesus said, Father, I pray that you would restore unto me the glory that I had with you in the beginning before I left heaven. And so now God is granting that request of his son, Jesus Christ, and he's lifting him up from planet earth and receiving him into the glory that he once had before he left heaven. His prayer has been answered, the prayer of John chapter 17. He has gone back to the Father, taken up into the glory he left. I want to say something to you this morning. If you're here as a child of God, your sins have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, If you've been born again, one day you too will be taken up. Can you say amen this morning? I'm telling you, I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. (laughs) I'm, I'm looking for him who is coming to receive me unto himself. Just as he went, if I'm alive at the second coming of Jesus, the Bible says I will go up exactly like he did. Amen. Hallelujah. That makes me want to shout this morning. Listen, that's something to look forward to. Listen, if you're a Christian, you're a winner. Whether you're sick or whether you die or whether you live, you're a winner. Can I get an amen this morning? Just as Jesus went up, the Bible says that every child of God who is alive at the second coming of Jesus, the first phase of his second coming, he will appear on the clouds in the sky and he will bring us up to him. That's known as the rapture. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. And we will be gone from this earth. Praise God. No more taxes. <laughs> I ought to get amen rippling all over this congregation. I tell you, you better hold on to your seat, buddy. I'm telling you, if you think you're paying taxes now, if I think I'm paying taxes, they're telling us there's more down the road to come. But praise God, they can't tax us if we aren't here. <laughs> amen. Amen. And he said this same Jesus, as you see him going, is going to come back in like manner. Now, how did he go? He went physically. How is he coming back? He's coming back physically. He's coming back physically. Number three, this same Jesus is coming back. He will come as he went, bodily and visibly. Now, listen to this. Only those who know him will behold him. Only those who know him will behold him. I'm telling you, there's coming an event. There's coming an event that's going to shake this world up. History is not haphazard. History is not cyclical. Don't let anybody try to convince you that history is cyclical. History is not cyclical. It is headed toward one event and one specific point at all. And that is the return of Jesus to judge and rule this earth. That's where history is headed. It is not cycle. I've said all my life, and you've said history has a way of repeating itself. (laughs) That's not so. History has one point, and that's the return of Jesus Christ. I tell you, this world's going to have a shock, it's going to have a surprise. The return of Jesus has a specific purpose behind it. And that purpose is, number one, he will come first for his church. Just flip over for just a moment. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. 
gives for you the picture of the first phase of His coming. Jesus has two phases in His coming. The first phase, He appears on the clouds in the sky, and He calls forth His church to come forth. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, is the story of that. That's known as the rapture. It is the same word that's used in our text this morning, that He was caught up out of their sight, caught up into heaven. That's the, the meaning of the word rapture. Like Jesus, Acts 1 verse 9, he was taken up. And if we're alive, when this event transpires, all of a sudden, we will be taken up from this life. I have often thought about this. I travel a lot. I've flown in a lot of places in this world. And the good Lord willing, I'll be flying again in September going back to Vietnam. And I've often thought, Lord, how neat it would be while I'm on this plane for you to come in the sky. I pray and hope that the pilot of this plane is a born-again Christian because if he's not, that those who are not Christian on that plane, when all the Christians are exited from that plane, uh, will have a pilotless airplane and wonder what in the world has taken place. You see, the rapture is a secret thing. No one knows when it's going to happen. No one knows. But I'm going to tell you something. It's going to happen. It's on the way, beloved. It's sooner than we realize. It's sooner than we realize. I believe, as I speak to your heart this morning, there are many of you in this audience will be alive when Jesus comes back again. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe that with all of my heart. And so when he comes, he's going to call his church out of this world. Why? Because the church is his bride. And he loves his bride. He loves his bride. I had a wedding just recently, and the groom marched out behind me with his best man. We got in our positions, and the groomsman and the bridesmaid began to come down the aisle. And the groomsman, he turns to me. You know what he asked me? He said, which way should I be turning right now? Which way should I be standing? And he was standing facing me. And I said, don't face me. Turn and look at your bride as she comes down the aisle. Don't look at me. I'm, I'm not marrying you. <laughs> Don't look at me. Look. Turn and look back there. That's where your bride is going to come down the aisle. And I looked at him, and he began (laughs) like that, and tears started coursing down his cheek because he saw the one he has waited so long for. And when Jesus comes, when Jesus comes and steps out on the cloud, he's going to look and says, Here comes my bride. Here comes my bride that I live for and I died for and I was buried for and that I rose for and that I ascended for. Here comes my bride. And suddenly we're going to be taken out of this world. The Bible says there will be two in the field. One will be taken, two left. There will be two in the bed. One taken, one left. Listen, if you aren't ready, I would suggest that you get ready. I would suggest that you get ready. For there's coming a missing persons report in America and the world the like of which has never been known. And they're going to wonder where we are, (laughs) where we are. This will be, now listen to this, this will be for believers only. Non-believers will be left on this earth. Non-believers. Be ready. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2 warns us and cautions us to be ready. The second part of his coming will be to come back to this earth, literally. The Bible says that he will set his feet upon the Mount of Olives outside the city of Jerusalem. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, talks about this, and chapter 25. I would encourage you to write this down and read it when you go home today sometime or this evening. This talks about his coming back to the earth, not to save people, not to redeem people. Now listen to this. But when he comes the second time and plants his feet again on this earth, it will be coming to judge and to rule the earth. It's awful quiet in here. It's awful quiet. And the reason is because we know in our heart of hearts that's so. When he comes back, it will be as king of kings and lord of lords. And the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Jesus to the glory of God the Father in heaven. 
he will come again. 